Ave. Are you sure you are happy to be here this, this day? Ave. Only two people are responding. Ave. Good. It's nice to be here before our blessed Mother Mary and her divine son. And this afternoon, I want to briefly tell you on what you know already, just to strengthen your faith, just to encourage you, just to make us come closer to our blessed Mother Mary because she is full of grace. Ave. Ave. Let us bow our heads. I want to make a little prayer. O oh Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in your servants, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the perfection of your ways, in the reality of your virtues, in the communion of your mysteries. Have dominion over every adverse power. In your own spirit, to the glory of God the Father, we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ave. Ave. As if that should be the only sermon I want to give this afternoon. I think that is enough for us. But this afternoon I want to share with you the Annunciation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. My dear brothers and sisters, we are here to contemplate once more on the divine words of the Annunciation and our Blessed Mother Mary's response to it. We have come to cling to her, to listen to her, to learn from her with love and humility, besieging her maternal intercession upon the world and upon our lives. One thing is very clear to us is that in the incarnation of the eternal word, Mary could not have humbled herself more than she did humble herself. And on the other hand, God could not have exalted her more than he did exalt her. The scripture te clearly tells us in Matthew chapter 23 from verse 12, that whoever shall exalt himself shall be what? Humbled. And he that shall humble himself shall be what? Exalted. These words of Jesus cannot fail us because the word of God is God. In the beginning, the Bible says in John chapter 1 from verse 1, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was what? God. Because everything that was created came from the power of the Word of God. And the Bible says, that Word is the source of life, a life that is light, a light that darkness cannot withstand. And that is why in John 6, 63, the Bible says, your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. Because in John 6, 68, it is very clear that only Jesus have the message of what? Eternal life. Ave. Ave. Therefore, God, having determined to become man and thus to redeem man from his fallen state, sought among women for the one who was the most holy and most humble. And this was the most tender Virgin Mary. Our dear Lord would not become the son of Mother Mary without her consent. Just like a spiritual writer once said, he would not take flesh from her unless she gave it. The Archangel Gabriel in the Annunciation visited our blessed Mother Mary, and we know the role of the Archangel. He is the messenger of good news. And he came with this salutation, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to let us understand that in the whole of the whole wide world and in our history, there are two people who are so full of grace. In John chapter 1 from verse 16, the Bible says, from Jesus, from his fullness, we have all received what? Grace upon grace. And the second person is our blessed mother Mary in Luke chapter 1 from verse 28, when the salutation was pronounced to her, Hail Mary, the Bible never said you are half grace. The Bible never said you are one quarter grace. But what the Bible said is what? Full of grace. And that is why St. Alphonsus Liguri, putting St. Thomas, remarks in his eighth treatise that our blessed Mother Mary is full of grace in three ways. One, 
First, she was filled with grace as to her soul, so that from the beginning, her beautiful soul belongs all to God. Secondly, she was filled with grace as to her body, so that she merited to clothe the eternal word with her most pure flesh. Thirdly, she was filled with grace for the benefit of us all, so that all men and women might partake of it. Even though there are saints who have received so much grace from God that it is not only sufficient for themselves, but also for the salvation of many, though not all men. However, only our Lord Jesus Christ and our dear beloved Mother Mary who was so full of grace as suffice to save all, I mean to save everyone. That is why we can say that there is no one who does not partake from grace of Mary as the mother of Jesus. Now, dear friends, that the graces received in God is in his fullness, but there is a distinction. In our Lord Jesus Christ, we receive this grace from Jesus as the author of this grace. But from our mother Mary, we receive it as the mediatrix of all graces. Also, we receive this grace from Jesus as our Savior. From our Blessed Mother Mary, we receive it as an advocate. We also receive the grace from Jesus as the source of all this grace. From our Blessed Mother Mary, we receive it as a channel. The Gospel of St. Luke, when you read Luke chapter 1 from verse 29, tells us that our Blessed Mother Mary was troubled at the sayings or the salutation of the archangel. Why was she troubled? Did she fear an illusion, or was it her vagina modesty which caused her to be disturbed at the sight of a man, as some suppose in the belief that the archangel appeared under a human form? No. When you go through that text clearly in Luke chapter 129, you will understand that she was troubled at the sayings. Not at the presence, but at the saints, the salutations. Her trouble arose from her humility because the more the archangel exalted her, the more she humbled herself and entered into the consideration of her own nothingness. And just as Christ Jesus was comforted by an archangel, by an angel in the agony in the garden, so too is our blessed Mother Mary encouraged by the angels with these words, Fear not, the Lord is always with you. Luke 1, 30. The archangel further explained, explained the divine plan and the presence of the blessed Trinity always and forever in her life. Now at the fiat response of our blessed mother, the only begotten Son of God left the bosom of the eternal Father to become man like us, and instantly, too, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. John 1.14 And that is why he is rightly called the Son of God, the Son of the Blessed Virgin Mary. One powerful thing I must tell you about this fiat is that while a fiat of God created the light, created the heaven and earth in Genesis, the fiat of our Blessed Mother Mary make God to become man like us. From the Annunciation story, we see in his fullness the humility of Mary. Humility, that is, her nothingness. St. Bernard once said that with regard to this virtue, that although Mary made herself dear to God by her virginity, yet it was by her humility that she rendered herself worthy to become the mother of the Creator. Though she pleased God by her virginity, she conceived God by her humility. Lastly, my dear brothers and sisters, let me point here that Mary's humility was the ladder by which Jesus deigned to descend from heaven to earth to become man in her womb. And it is still the ladder that Jesus climbed to die on the cross for our salvation. When you read Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 to 11, you clearly understand that the Bible says, though he was God, he never claimed equality with God, but humbled himself 
taking the form of a slave. And because he was humbly a God, even to accepting death, death on a cross, God exalted him. In humility, God exalted him and gave him a name, a very name. And that is why I tell you today, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. My dear brothers and sisters, there is this wonderful story I keep on reading and I enjoy reading it. A priest once was at a confession and a young boy came to him and after hearing his confession, the priest encouraged him and asked the young man to always have devotion to our blessed mother Mary and the penance that the priest gave to the young man was, when you wake up in the morning, say Hail Mary. Before you go to bed, make sure you say Hail Mary and then other devotions. Even though the young man found it so difficult to keep on to this devotion until the next confession, as the priest had told him, yet he tried. The next time he met the priest, he told him, keep it up, continue. Not quite long, the young man had to leave that country in search of a greener pastor. He went to another country, and then, as her mother Mary, a powerful virgin that she is, the Ark of All Covenant, the mother of all, the refuge of all sinners, as we call her the comfort of the afflicted, as we remember her the help of all Christians, as we call upon her the mediatrix of all graces, she was rich in grace and mercy. Because this young man kept to her intercession, calling upon her, his life changed. Now, after a long time, he met this priest again, and the priest noticed that the life of this young man has really changed, and he asked him, how come that the bad lives that you were leading, you have really changed? He said, it was that little devotion that you gave me, that simple practice of saying the Hail Mary every morning, and saying it before I retire to bed, that really touched my life. So my dear brothers and sisters, when you look at the Annunciation, it is full of mystery. When you ponder on the Annunciation, you will see that our mother Mary calls upon us to come to her. A simple act of devotion can draw you closer and can change your life. And that is why we as the sons and daughters of our blessed mother Mary, we join our Holy Father, Pope Francis, in inaugurating and praying to the intercession of our mother Mary, as tomorrow he will be consecrating the world into the immaculate heart of our blessed mother Mary. In this, he is calling upon us as sons and daughters of our mother Mary to consecrate our lives to her immaculate heart, to consecrate our families to her immaculate heart, to consecrate our societies to her immaculate heart, and to consecrate our country and our world, because through her intercession, the world can be changed. There is hope for the world whenever we come to her. And that is why finally, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to end with this simple thing that we know. When you're trying to learn a car, like trying to learn how to drive a car, you are given the letter L, isn't it? And L means what? Learner, you are learning. So when you come to our blessed Mother Mary, you come to her to learn. Because one, she listened to the words of the Annunciation. So when you come to her, you have to listen and leave everything about gossip or anger, every problem that you have, you listen to her. And the next thing is, in listening, you have to also learn from her. Because in her humility, in her prayer life, in her virtues, she will teach you something. And finally, in listening, in learning, you will learn to always love one another. Ave. Amen.